very glad to know you're still with us. The conversation continues here with Dr. Omale. Thank you very much for Thank staying. You. Just before that break, we talked about, uh, you rather, talked about the fact that corruption is not our biggest problem. Can you expand shade? Um, the reason I say it's not the biggest problem is because corruption exists globally in every country. Some are slightly better than others, but there's this everywhere. Um, people may not know that one of the biggest, one of the most corrupt countries on the face of the earth is China. I mean, I've done this, been in China so many times. I mean, you know. I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. But the difference here is this. Because I remember during one of my visits to China, I met some of their, you know, political uh, leaders. And um, he said, he said, we're not, he said well, you know, we are not that different from Nigerians. I said, how? He said, we are, you know, we take all our, we take all our backhand, you know, all our corrupt, you know, people, officials are corrupt too. I said, so what's the difference? He said, the difference is this. He said, in China, if we give you a bridge to build, if the cost of the bridge is actually one billion and you give it out for three billion and you, you know, pocket the two billion, he said, you may get away with that. He said, but if you don't build that bridge, you are dead. And now that explains everything. You know, instantly I knew what, what he meant. That corruption, even though it exists, has not stopped their stopped development. Their development. If you read the House of Reps uh, report or after uh, you and Yaradra became president when they were, they were probing some of the contracts given under OBJ, you read those reports, you find, they find that you find that you feel sorry because some of the contracts have been 80% mobilized. They went to the site, the bush has not even been caught. Yet 80% have been okay. mobilized. So the corruption in Nigeria is you take the, you, 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 you know, you take the money and you do nothing. The corruption in a place like China is you take money, but we see something for it. So, so that, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to make an excuse that corruption doesn't need to be dealt with. It clearly needs to be dealt but with. But it shouldn't be like our primary number it one It shouldn't be the excuse for non-performance. It shouldn't be the excuse for non-development. There are corrupt countries developing. What we have in Nigeria that is the biggest problem is impunity. Because I know, if I know the governor can give me a contract for a road, I can be paid for that road and not do the road. That is, that is a peculiarly Nigerian element. Because corruption, no matter corruption, I mean, in fact, I've not found a word in English to describe what we, have, what we have in Nigeria. It's worse than corruption. Okay, I wish we had more time. There's so much <laughs> to talk about. So we'll just go on to talk about what the work that you do. Um, mm. I was reading up on you a bit earlier, and among your many roles, uh, you're a pioneering director general of the Institute of Police and Security Policy Research. Yes. Um, the idea, I believe, is to promote collaborative research and reform programs within the police, military, uh, security uh, practitioners, the academic and uh, industry as part across the African uh, mm. continent. I'm just trying to read mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. as it is. So tell us quickly a bit about that. Well, the IPSPR, the Poli in, uh, Institute of Police and Security Policy Research, uh, was birthed out of the need for evidence-based security policy in Africa. Uh, part of the challenge we have in Nigeria and collaterally in many of the African countries is that decisions are not evidence-based. You know, for example, if you are the police chief and you have one billion naira, and you have to choose between increasing the salaries of police officers or increasing their equipment in terms of maybe bulletproof vests and what uh, for all the officers, how will you decide? How will you determine which one you are spending that money on? I can only spend that one billion on one either of those two. You know that's what I'm just giving you an example of how evidence-based policy are needed in our security sector. So we've done research, for example, that, that, that officers themselves have said, this is what is our priority. But then if the, ma the police uh, management uh, don't have access to such research, how would they know how to spend the limited resources? So that's the whole idea that bringing the practitioners, the, uh, the academia, the people in terms of instruments, in companies that manufacture security equipment, bring everything collaboratively in a pan-African way to you know, design policies to secure this continent. That's the purpose of the Institute. Okay. You, you are a publisher, among other things. Where do you find the time to write the books that you have written? <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, well, at the last count, I have a book coming out next month, and that would be my 41st book. 41st? Yes, I've written 40 previously. Well, what's uh, the title of this one? It varies. The, the next one is um, uh, Secrets of Speaking Truth to Power. But I've written on uh, policing in Nigeria, you know, uh, 
know, the, how to sort of develop good governance. And in that particular book, for example, I gave over 70 recommendations on how to improve policing in Nigeria. When do you rest? What do you do for rest? <laughs> I just needed to interject. What do you do for rest, for fun, to um, rejuvenate yourself? And Yes, I mean, it, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how to rest. That's partly, partly part of my problem. Okay. And, uh, and I'm not so much of a social animal. I don't like parties. Okay. Don't, but I you must unwind somehow. I mean, my unwinding is, believe it or not, either reading or watching action movies. I just used to unwind for that one or two hours and <laughs> phew, it's gone out Go of my head. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's been a very, very warm conversation. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing Thanks your for thoughts. Me. Thank yeah. you. And that's it for today. I hope you've had fun. No need to ask. A lot has been said today. I hope you listened and maybe took a thing or two from the conversation today. More conversations like this here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for your company.